Hello, my name is Isabella Green. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'd like to take a look at relationships. I don't do this very often, but this has just been on my mind and I have been realizing more and more stuff. And so I would like to share with you all of my discoveries here today. And we're going to talk about match made in heaven. So you meet this person and it, everything just feels so right. He feels very familiar. He feels like home. A lot of people say that, that, oh, that person felt like home and that's why I went for him. He felt very familiar, very good to me. And then two months later, what happened? And so let's examine here what might have happened. I'd like to bring to you the notion that Unless we awaken and are able to observe our own subconscious mind and retrain it, we are going to continue recreating the childhood imprints of love that we experience in our childhood home. By that I mean that regardless of how uncomfortable the experience within the household was, perhaps the parents were too busy or too logistical or not emotional, perhaps the parents were emotionally unavailable, perhaps the parents were maybe even addicted or abusive, when we grow up and leave that environment, we're going to be naturally drawn to the people who are eventually going to recreate the same exact environment emotionally. And so that's going to be the person that is going to feel like home. So when the person feels like home and we have not processed, cleared, and adjusted our inner mechanism that's doing the attracting and it's doing the choosing out of a hundred uh, guys and I'm going to use guys here because I'm a woman and I'm so let's talk probably women are watching this more than men so out of a hundred guys you're going to choose that one guy and he feels just right he feels like home but then he does become like home or relationship becomes like home and you find that Oh, maybe that person was wonderful at the beginning. Why? Because everyone is wonderful at the beginning. When we're in that state where we're producing all of the chemistry in the body, when we're inspired by being in love, everyone goes on their best behavior. But then as that goes and wears off a little bit, you start noticing that that wonderful, perfect person all of a sudden is emotionally unavailable or logistical not really paying attention to you just work 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 and you're not getting that connection that you were longing for or just like my father how did that happen I did not notice that I work with a lot of girls who come to me and ask me that question could you take a look is this my twin flame is this my soulmate would we have a karmic contract I was told that we had uh, many incarnations together. A different reader told me that. Could you confirm or not? And I look at that and I see exact same energetic frequency, energetic signature as the father. Or exact same energetic signature as what was going on in the childhood home. And so what's happening here? Well, maybe they did have many incarnations together in the past, but the matching was done from the perspective of subconscious mind where the childhood imprint of love is being matched and you would seek out the person that gives you exactly that in the long run. And then there is another one. Uh, they say that the person who is not able to love themselves they are not able to love others or they're not able to love you right well some people that love themselves too much uh would not be able to give you anything either because it's all inverted and that's when we have the the narcissistic type of behavior but i'm not talking about that i'm talking about uh, when we, especially, this happens very often with the women who are predisposed towards saving somebody. Men love that too. They love like to be a hero and save somebody. But first check for subconscious matching of like the mother or the father imprint 
or that relationship within the household that you grew up in. Uh, check for that first and then uh, there's another thing of being a hero, saving somebody. And so you see someone who, um, let's say, has addictions or illness, any illness that is really heavy and, and you know, the big diagnosis is there, we have uh, the feeling for them, we have our heart goes out, we want to help them, but we have to question first what consciousness allowed that person to develop that, that condition because every physical condition is matched by the inner state of being. So that's a big question to ask. Um, and then if the person is, let's just say, has addictions and uh, self-sabotage and behaviors and uh, we meet them and we're drawn to them magically and we see that we can help them and we can save them and our love would fix it all and then again, we we'll go through two months, maybe less even, right? And all of a sudden, what do we have here? The person is not able to give you love. What they given you is the same exact thing that they given themselves, which is the childhood imprint of how they were treated as a child. So the emotionally unavailable parents create emotionally unavailable person, not only emotionally unavailable to themselves, to you as well, mainly to themselves. And so that would lead to addictions because addiction is someone seeking that connection desperately because they never had that kind of connection ever so they're trying to outsource it through whatever things that they're addicted to oh my god guilt like louise hay says that that any physical pain means guilt addiction to guilt because guilt always seeks punishment and that means that the person that you get involved with and want to help them uh, is going to act towards you in a way to feel guilty. Why are they acting that way? You're constantly going to feel that they're doing something wrong and that feeds their addiction that supports their state of being, that supports their pain. And so looking at what kind of relationship the person has with themselves is going to determine how healthy their relationship is going to be with you. Uh, it's, it's a tricky one because it catches you off guard. We fall in love and we don't realize what's doing the attraction or why we're going for that and uh, becoming awake and aware. That's what changes all these things. Uh, once we clear our own imprints or become aware of those imprints, we're going to think twice before we're going to bring another uh, person who is going to recreate the environment, especially if, they, if the childhood environment was, uh, let's say, not ideal for a healthy relationship as a grown-up in your family, in your own family that you now created. And so what happens once we become aware of these things? I assist people to become aware of these things. Uh, during the sessions, but let's say you became aware of these things on your own. It hides really well. That's how we're, we're structured. You know, this is why we repeat the same patterns generation after generation. But once you become aware of that, you awake. Then you have a choice to observe. There's going to be like a wobbling in between where you, you will observe that you're still attracted to the ones who are potentially going to recreate that same environment for you. But you have a, a, an opportunity or you have the ability to catch yourself and pause. And as you continue clearing within your own inner being and becoming more and more conscious and bringing new imprints perhaps and perhaps... Uh, restructuring or training your subconscious mind to uh, create new patterns going forward, you would observe that you're no longer miraculously attracted to the very same person that you thought was the love of your life. How did that happen? Nothing happened. He didn't do anything wrong or he did everything wrong or he did everything to match your imprint, but you still thought that that's the love of your life or your soulmate, your twin flame or any of that. 
and all of a sudden pff, all these feelings are gone what happened while well, you worked on yourself and so you moved past that pattern or imprint and so that person no longer needs to play that role for you so they can move on so that you can move on and start attracting from the place that actually serves you and that perhaps you have reconditioned your subconscious mind to uh, work as a magnet that's going to be bringing the people into your reality and so now as you grow evolve and heal that the inner imprints or restructure the inner imprints of love you're going to be bringing in different types of people and then they're going to be able to observe what it is that's driving you there and also red flags become super visible so there'll be the, the, nothing is going to come out of the left field for you anymore so i uh, highly recommend being aware of this checking all your either subconscious high as well but we have ways to get there we have ways to uh, reprogram and then that opens up the whole new potential reality for us and that doesn't only go uh, within the relationship realm it also goes everywhere across the board throughout our entire life's experience so thank you for tuning in today. If you'd like to have a session with me, you can reach me at isabellagreen.com. I don't normally focus on relationships, but I can assist you with some questions if things are in blind spots. That definitely I can do for you. Um, at isabellagreen.com, you can send me a session request form and we'll take it from there. I love you. Take care now. Namaste. Namaste.